Welcome to the first diffusion tractography talk. My name is Michio Kotar, and I will be introducing you to diffusion MRI tractography, how you can produce beautiful images like this by exploiting the information in diffusion MRI to reconstruct the major white metal bundles in the brain and to estimate the connectivity between gray matter brain regions. So, in this first talk, I will discuss what the goal of tractography is, what we hope to obtain from this, and then I will disc go into the nitty gritty. First, in a talk, I will discuss Backpost X, which is the tool in FSL used to estimate in each voxel what are the local fiber orientations. And then we will see how the FSL tool ProTrack X uses probabilistic tractography to stitch these fiber orientations together into reconstructions of the major white matter bundles within the brain. We will discuss the various outputs that PropTrack X can produce. And in the final talk, I will discuss some of the limitations of tractography that are important to keep in mind when using this powerful modality. So what do we hope to obtain from tractography? Well, the real goal is that we know from post-mortem dissection study, as well as from tracer and other modalities, ex vivo modalities, that most of the axons within the brain are actually not just randomly oriented, but they organize within major white matter fiber bundles. And so our goal in tractography is to use the information that we have in diffusion MRI to reconstruct these white matter bundles, not ex vivo, but in vivo in the living human brain. So we actually already saw briefly a technique of how to do that, because when we looked um, in the previous lectures at the diffusion tensor, one of the things that we got from that was the principal diffusion direction, which was the first eigenvector of the diffusion tensor. And because we know that water diffuses more freely along axons than perpendicular to this, to the, it, this principal diffusion direction is actually an estimate of what the major fiber orientation within each voxel is. So we can use this to basically start in some voxel and just keep following in every voxel this estimate of the local fiber orientation. And what this gives us is a line through the brain, a so-called streamline, which is an estimate of the reconstruction of a white matter bundle. And using the diffusion tensor, we can actually already reconstruct a lot of the major white matter fiber bundles within the brain. Something very important to keep in mind is that these streamlines that we get from tractography are not the paths of individual axons. Axons are extremely tiny compared with the voxel size that we have in diffusion MRI. So when we estimate the major fiber orientations within a voxel, we don't get individual orientations from individual axons, we get average orientation from millions of axons. And when we reconstruct the path, we reconstruct the path of those bundles of millions of axons, not the individual axons. Keeping this limitation in mind, why would we be interested in reconstructing these white matter fiber bundles? So it turns out that the a lot of the neurological and psychiatric disorders that we might want to study in the brain are due to dis problems in these white matter bundles due to disconnections such as illustrated here for many of the uh, white matter bundles connecting uh, speech and somatosensory regions and these basic and all of these different um, and to study this in detail, we have to reconstruct these major white matter bundles so we can see where along the bundle is there a problem and which bundles are actually reduced in specific disorders. <coughs> so one way we so one goal of tractography is basically to produce maps 
of these major white matter bundles. So this, you can think of this as a way to segment the white matter into its major bundles. And once we have such a segmentation, you can, for example, study how the Fa in each of these bundles changes as a function of age, as for example done in this study. In addition to segmenting the white matter, we can also use the tractography to segment the gray matter. And the basic idea is here that we can use tractography to estimate for each gray matter region what other gray matter regions is it connected to. This is often referred to as its connectivity profile or its connectivity fingerprint. And because this uh, connectivity fingerprint is different for different gray matter regions, we can use it to distinguish different parts of the cortex or the thalamus or different gray matter nuclei. Um, we will look at this in a lot more detail in the fourth talk. But so basically what we hope to get from tractography is some way to reconstruct these white matter tracts, which allows us to segment the white matter, and some way to estimate the connectivity between different gray matter regions. So in summary, what in tractography we use diffusion MRI, which is non-invasive and in vivo, to reconstruct the white matter bundles within the brain. But we have to keep in mind that when we get these streamlines that we get from tractography, they do not represent individual axons because our resolution is just far too low for that. They just represent the paths of millions of axons. And importantly, we own actually only measure the diffusion of water, which and we somehow have to relate this with these major white matter bundles. And that is basically what we will try to do in the next two talk. In the next one, we will look into how we can re relate the diffusion MRI signal with the fiber orientations within each part of the uh, within each voxel in our diffusion MRI scan.